to another episode of Beating Alpha. So this is episode 166 and we have a very special guest. His name is Adam Ulery. So Adam is a business agility consultant focused on helping organizations clarify and meet their business outcomes, which a lot of that conversation is going to be happening today. He helps companies become resilient, uh, rediscover curiosity and change their traditional approach to value delivery. Adam is also a real estate investor helping earners and accredited investors grow their wealth through multifamily real estate investing. Adam is the head of investor relations for Dreamstone Investments and is the co-host of Tech Guys Who uh, Invest podcast. So make sure to go and find that on iTunes. It's uh, again, Tech Guys Who Invest and Tampa Cashflow Educational Meetup. So go for uh, go and search this out as well. And make sure to get in contact with Adam on a personal level. And of course, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter is going to be in the show notes there for you as well. Uh, Fat, uh, Adam, again, want to say a big thank you again for coming over today. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good to hear, you know, because excitement is, is what not a lot of people have at this current time, you know, so yeah. bringing some, you know, from you, it, it's always good. So, uh, okay, so let's let's maybe explore a little bit of your personal background because that's what everybody starts on the podcast. So let's talk about you first, which I think everybody has a different story. So I would love to hear your personal story. How did you get involved with uh, with real estate and all these different things, you know, creating a podcast, you know, helping people to to clarify their business outcomes and all of that great stuff. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So, well, I'll start off by saying that. Um, I, I discovered real estate somewhere around 2016, and I had no idea that this was a possibility for, for me or, uh, you know, people like me who were uh, a white collar professional, you know, working in the knowledge based industries like information technology. And um, I, I just put my money into a 401k. Um, into mutual funds and was hoping there would be enough for me to live on one day when I had enough to be able to quit my job and retire, right? And then a friend of mine turned me onto this book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I read that book and it, it completely blew my mind when I read it. It was so simple, but it had some profound ideas in there that made me want to discover more. And what I, I realized in my journey there was this is uh, possible for anyone who really tries and really goes after it. So I began to look towards investing in real estate at that point. I learn by doing. I experiment with things and try them. And, um, and so I bought a rental property and uh, I realized, hey, this, this indeed is a great way to begin to build some wealth. And I started to learn about cash flow at that point and how important it is to invest in a different way, to invest for cash flow. So I continued on my journey. And as I got more educated, I kept hearing about these guys doing big stuff, buying apartment buildings. And I, I had always thought, how cool would it be to own like a big office building or a apartment building or something like that? But, but that's for rich people or people who come from wealthy family backgrounds, people who had money in their family for generations, you know, that's not me. Uh, middle, I'm a middle-class guy, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have gone to college and gotten a good job. And, and then uh, I began to educate myself and really increase my uh, financial intelligence and my emotional intelligence. I started to change my mindset and I started to realize I can do this. And, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, here we are in 2020. Um, my team and I at Dreamstone just closed a hundred unit in Atlanta. Uh, we're working on a 19 unit in Nashville right now that, that's a build to rent model. So we're building that from the dirt up for the purpose of holding onto it and renting it. Uh, and then we've got close to 200 unit in the pipeline that's coming soon. Can't really talk too much about it because it's not official. But the point is, I'm now doing deals that I never thought were possible. And it started with a mindset shift. Got it. So, yeah, and there's a lot of those mindset shifts are included, you know, in the book, which, of course, uh, first question is, 
who are those great people who are handing out all the rich dad poor dad books to all these you know real estate investors <laughs> you know because i hear that rich dad poor dad book all the time people mentioning all the time it's kind of the entry point into real estate and shifting the mindset so can you talk about the expand of that a little bit more? Because you mentioned a few things that I think it's very, you know, very important. You mentioned uh, financial and emotional intelligence, which, you know, it, that's what it requires for somebody to have or hone to make sure that they can make great decisions going further, great investment decisions. So can you expand, like, how important is the mindset and what people maybe talk about perspective that they have that is wrong, it can be fixed uh, when it comes to investing? Yeah, I love it. Uh, financial intelligence is, I mean, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even, I was so financially ignorant that I had no idea just how much more there was to know or to learn. And I had always thought that there was a type who would, who, who would be uh, very smart when it comes to finances. And those were those Wall Street guys who ran you know, hedge funds and things like that. And I am not a numbers guy, actually. So uh, what I did is I partnered with someone who is a numbers guy. I mean, that's kind of what you do when you're, when you're taking on bigger projects like these apartment buildings, right? You build a team and you sort of play to your strengths. So uh, as I began to educate myself around, uh, around financially improving my knowledge, I, I realized that, you know, you don't, it's not necessarily about being an, an expert at remembering all of the numbers, but you need to understand how everything works and you need to understand um, a little bit about macroeconomics and microeconomics and how things work together. You need to understand how money flows. That's really important. Like how does money flow through uh, organizations or, or people? Um, you need to understand how to make money and how to make your money work for you. So these are the things I started to learn as I read these books. And when we talk about financial intelligence, I'm talking about those things. And what I recommend someone who's interested in this does is maybe ask a friend who is successful or wealthy, uh, if they have a, a book or a material they would recommend. Uh, you know, reach out to me. I, I'm happy to uh, recommend some books to you and things like that. And they're not going to be like textbook type things. They're more books like like this Rich Dad Poor Dad book, you know, or um, uh, the uh, T. Harv Ecker book, Millionaire Mind. That that's that kind of book expands how you think about things and and really helps you start to look at things a different way. And I think that's what's important there. Exactly, exactly. So as I mentioned, yeah, there are many, many great books that, of course, if you get in contact with Adam through personal social media, you know, he would recommend a bunch of those because in this in this day and age, like making quality decisions, especially now during this time, if you're still watching or listening during the COVID, you know, like there is a lot of uncertainty. So making clear decisions. So that that comes down to shifting your mind and, you know, to make sure that you're in the right position emotionally probably most of the time so can we talk about because we kind of talked about financial and you know intelligence what about the emotional one are we talking about just being kind of frugal and you know saving money or is there more to that yeah no that that's really good and you don't you don't always hear a lot of investors talk about this but emotional intelligence is really important and uh, there's a great book out there called emotional intelligence uh by Dol uh his name is dolman um, I can get that information to you, but he talks about how uh, beginning to understand yourself and, and your emotions and how they work and maintaining self-awareness is, is really important. And as investors, why that's important is, is kind of what you, you said there about, you know, making good decisions and really understanding why you're doing something, not doing something out of emotion, but doing something because it makes sense and it's the right thing to do for you. Um, that's all really important. Also, uh, kind of not getting carried away or emotional um, and, and making a decision or, or doing something that's not in your best interest just because you, you kind of get excited about it at the time. So um, those types of things. And then also the, the component where you're thinking longer term and you're not just sort of living for the moment and you're starting to think about 
you know, what is my, what is my future going to look like if I continue to operate this way versus what do I want my future to look like and working backwards, what things do I need to be doing now to make sure I get there? So, you know, those types of things are really important. And then as far as, you know, things like just uh, personal financial habits and uh, should I, should I be very frugal or should I, um, you know, look more like things are not finite resources and there's enough for everyone. And if we all kind of get together and help each other out, there will be more than enough for all of us. Uh, you know, that's what I call an abundance mindset. And I used to be the guy that really pinched pennies. I mean, very, you know, I said frugal, my wife might use a different word, right? I was <laughs> the guy who would hold on to every single penny I could, right? And, and then I started to learn that, you know, that's not really the way wealthy people think. Wealthy people think, um, how can we make enough for all of us? You know, like, what could I do so I could have this and this? And, and that's how I've kind of begun to shift my mindset. And it's really opened up my life. It's, it's made things possible that weren't because you start to think about things a different way. You start to try to solve problems that before may have stopped you in your tracks. All of this does tie into that emotional intelligence piece. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And that's the book because uh, I just Googled it fast. Emotional Good. intelligence It's called Daniel Goleman. So if you want to go and get the book, and actually I remember I have an audio book on that as well, which is, uh, again, it's a really, really cool piece of, uh, you know, information there as well. So make sure to, to go and grab the book. So again, like I cannot talk about that. How important is that emotional intelligence and making great decisions because everything that we have in our life, I mean, the fact that you are where you are and you're doing things that you're currently doing. And everybody else who's watching or listening to this episode, you are in that place because of the decisions that you make in the past. And where you're going to be in the future, it will depend on the decisions that you're making today. And like my, my personal favorite quote so far, I, it is like the best math that we can learn is how to calculate the future cost of our current decisions. So, cool. nice. yes. So, so this is this is the kind of, I think that should be one of the key kind of quotes, I, I guess, for the people to live by. Because people are looking for the secret recipe for life and for the business to so making great investment choices when it comes down to, again, first of all, mindset and then making good quality decisions. So, but can we talk about those? Look, if people are watching right now, because I think it's a great time to be maybe diversified or invested, you know, in real estate, uh, if, if that's a main investment, if people want to do that in real estate, because it's a kind of no brainer, you know, it, it's, it's an easy business to understand. You can go and touch the building. I mean, do you see people there? It's not like some sort of an app or, you know, start a business that you don't understand. So it's easy, but how people can go about that? Like, can we talk about the goal setting process and why somebody, how can somebody set their personal goals to make sure that they could be in a great position, you know, moving forward? Yeah, that's great. And I, I like how you um, sort of, brought it back to the most important fundamental thing and that is setting good goals, right? That, that is the most important thing and it's where everyone should start. Even if you don't know what type of asset class you want to invest in or what your investor identity looks like, the first thing you should do is be honest with yourself about what your life goals are. What do you want to achieve in life? And, and I like thinking about short, medium and long range goals. And then you can adjust as you go, right? But it's important to know, well, where do I want to be in six months? Where do I want to be in a year or three years? Where do I want to be long-term? Like, you know, in 10 or 15 years, it's important to know those things. And if you take time and sit down and just think through that and then write those down, it's really powerful. And it's the difference between you just sort of drifting through life and finding yourself wherever you happen to be and you making your life intentional and working towards something. And you will achieve those things that you focus on, right? Like what you focus on expands. So you'll achieve those things if you clarify them and write them down. And the funny thing about it is there's not some super comp complicated secret formula to this. It's sitting down, giving yourself a couple hours on a Saturday morning and thinking about it and then writing down what you want. That's it. 
Uh, is this something I could achieve in six months? Then it falls in the six month bucket. Is this something that would take me a couple of years? All right, maybe it falls in <laughs> the three year bucket. Well, what do I want when I'm 65 years old? Or if you're 65, what do I want when I'm 80? You know, or if you're 80, what do I want when I'm 95? Whatever it is, right? Like think about what you want and, and write it down and then start taking steps towards it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. So, and one of the steps, again, it's uh, like if people look, because there's a lot of people right now and you know, yourself, you're talking with these people, I'm sure on a day, on a daily basis. And again, coming back to the kind of COVID, you know, it's like, of course, this is not the show to talk about that, but it's a great time. Well, I don't know, maybe that sounds wrong, but it's still, look, it's where we are right now. People should be looking at different options. As before, when I started, you know, recording this episode, I said 1915 business gone overnight. So there's a lot of uncertainty what's going to happen with, with jobs, with businesses and the future, right? So again, how are we going to survive? Because, you know, on this planet, we need money, we need food, we need to dress ourselves, we need to pay the bills. And still, we need to we want to live a good life. So how are we going to do that? So like we're looking for different investment vehicles and maybe Wall Street is not being one of those. You know, because a lot of people waking up to kind of that stuff is like, I don't want to pay for fiduciaries, all the fees. And, you know, like it doesn't make sense with volatility in the market. But when it comes to real estate itself, like, can we talk about multifamily? What's, what makes it different uh, from the rest of the commercial asset classes out there? Yeah, so th that's my personal investor identity. I really like the commercial multifamily, which means five units and above. Uh, we, we focus on apartment complexes at Dreamstone. And uh, that's what I focus on. So I like that because I believe it's the greatest way to build wealth. And I, I really like working with a team. I prefer to work with a team. And if you're going after uh, 100 unit apartment buildings, 200 unit apartment buildings, you must work with a team. That's not something you can do by yourself. Now, like I, I went and bought my first rental house all by myself. And yes, you can do that by yourself. I cannot go buy a 150 unit apartment building in Tampa by myself, right? I need a team. I like working with a team and with that game, you must. So see, this all fits into my investor identity because I sat down and I thought, what do I like? What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And, and you know, what will help me reach my goals, those goals I set down and wrote out and apartment investing met those the best. So that worked well for me. And those, those are the reasons I like uh, investing in apartment buildings. Um, financially, I just love the fact that you can add a fairly small amount of value to a property increase the rent of each unit by a fairly small amount, say, you know, 20 bucks. And it makes a huge difference in the value of the property. So, I mean, that's one of my favorite things about it. You can make some improvements to a property you buy and, and say it's just dated and you kind of, you know, bring it more up to date and put some new fixtures and finishes in the, in the units. And then you raise each unit by 50 bucks. Now, all of a sudden, you know, your, your 100 unit apartment building is worth a couple million bucks more. Um, when you go to sell it, all of the investors in that deal get to benefit from that increased value. I mean, what other investment can you do that with? So that's why I personally like multifamily apartments. Got it. Okay. So talking about those deals that you currently have, can you talk about what markets those deals are? And can you talk about, again, that decision-making process that made you as a team to invest in those markets? Yeah, sure. I mean, we're focused on the Southeast and uh, we, two of us from Dreamstone live in Tampa. Uh, one lives in Atlanta. And so it's nice to invest near home. Uh, but more importantly, we feel like the population is shifting here. Uh, we feel like a lot of people from the Northeast are moving down into the Southern states. I mean, that's what the numbers are showing us. And so that's one of the primary reasons we're investing here. We really look for growth in markets. We, we look for properties that are in the path of progress, which means 
um, demographic data indicates that people are moving into these areas. And so we get right in front of that so we can buy it less expensive. And then when it's time to sell the property, uh, it will, you know, it will benefit from the increased population in the area. And we like to focus on value add of some component. It could be physical or it could just be the business operations. We buy from a lot of mom and pops, which means they may be a family owned business or, or they may just be a few people together running this property, but they're not really treating it like a business. And, and at Dreamstone, we absolutely treat it like a business. You know, we, we have processes that are standardized. We have systems we use. We operate it as efficiently as we can. We continuously improve our processes. Um, so, you know, we, we really come in and can add value to a business operation if it's not being run super efficiently. And those are ways, as I said a minute ago, to just kind of increase the value of the property. And then we're syndicating deals, which means we're bringing investors into our deals, people who want to invest. Uh, a lot of times they're high earners or, you know, professionals like doctors, lawyers, uh, IT engineers or managers that, you know, like vice presidents or directors in a, a corporation who want to invest in real estate, but they don't have time. They actually like their job. So they don't want to go do what we're doing and do it full time. So they'll invest in one of our deals and, and we'll put groups of people like that together and we'll go take down a deal. And then everyone who is invested in that benefits from the profit that we make over the life of the deal. I mean, we're pretty typical syndication. You know, we hold most of ours for five to seven years or so. Got it. So talking about those business systems, because uh, basically uh, a business pretty much is, is the, just the, a lot of systems that have to be implemented and like in multifamily business and what's happening right now with the, you know, like real estate industries, uh, is getting disrupted as well, you know, with all these virtual viewings and, you know, because now you can buy a property multifamily deal, which is probably 20, 30 million dollars without even looking at the property, which was probably never done before. You know, yeah. that's how people make uh, transactions these days. So can you talk about those kind of day to day operations and maybe softwares and the tools that help you to kind of run these operations as smooth as possible during the times? Yeah, yeah, I can. And uh, our partner who runs that, his name is Nick, and he has a, a construction project management background, uh, and he takes care of our daily operations. And, and that's his focus, is making sure that everything runs smoothly. So we'll use some, some tools like project management type tools, like uh, Monday and um, Appfolio and a couple of those. I mean, at the end of the day, the the actual tool we use doesn't matter too much because most of them really do the same thing. But the, the point is we, we've got a piece of software that's designed to manage these types of projects. And then we take the time to intentionally put our processes together and make sure that things are running the way they should. So we'll, we'll actually spend time uh, mapping out the process and then making sure that that's what we follow. And, and that's really important. So Nick, stays on top of all of our vendors and, and contractors and, and make sure everything essentially runs as smooth as it could. And that's really important to have somebody focused on that because um, you don't always get that from some of the people who talk about multifamily and you know some of the, the gurus or people who are really trying to encourage people to, to take a class to learn how to do this. But I mean, it's a business, it's hard work. So you need someone who's dedicated to that. Nick spends his whole day and he, he works a lot. Um, he spends his time really focusing on running that business. It is a full-time job for him. Mm -hmm. Got it. So again, having you the tech guys who invest podcasts, I have to ask the following question. Again, talking about the talking about the softwares and technology. I mean, do you see anything else besides what's uh, what's available? You know, Monday.com and those available kind of softwares for you know day-to-day -day operations and maybe dealing you know with uh, buying properties or dealing with investors. Do you see something uh, that will help even more to disrupt real estate uh, industry? Let's say from machine learning standpoint or artificial intelligence. 
Yeah, so for my day job, I work for a company that builds custom software and we're consultants. So the guys I work with are at the top of their game. From an engineering standpoint, we hired the best because we have to go into, we work with really large enterprises, companies that everyone listening to this has absolutely heard of before. We build software for them professionally. So our guys have to come into a place like that and be able to start building custom software quickly. And you have to be one of the best to do that. Um, so I'm fortunate to be surrounded by these guys who are really intelligent um, and, and know tech very well. And I, I would say, uh, based on just being in that industry, what I hear tells me that artificial intelligence, machine learning, is going to produce some really cool tools that will completely change the way we do business in the future. I think also some of that blockchain technology is already starting to, to change some of that. Um, and I think everything's just going to continue to get much more streamlined and things we're doing now where it takes five steps to get something done or you know, hundreds of steps to close a transaction, for example. I think all of that will be completely uh, simplified to, to be, you know, one or two clicks of a button, you know, and, and all of those technologies I just mentioned, I think will come into play there. So many things will get automated to the point where machines can make decisions that require humans right now. And I think um, only some of the final decisions will probably be required by us at some point in the not too distant future. Yeah, so I think the the, the, the decision that we're gonna make, do you click a button and let the machine to decide or you don't don't click a button? That's pretty much it. Exactly. And that's as much as you're gonna get involved, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it'll be um, in many ways more secure, you know, especially with the, the blockchain stuff, you know, with the way transactions are done. Uh, and the way things are are preserved as record, you know, things like the title transfer and um, ownership and, and things uh, will look quite a bit differently than it does now. And I think be more secure because I think it'll be harder to um, fraudulently change things or, or copy things. Got it. Yeah. And, and on that note, yeah, I had somebody on previous on the show that was talking exactly the same as you're talking about uh, raising capital through, you know, tokenized coins, you know, through basically through cryptocurrency, because mm -hmm. that will allow those people, again, raise capital without, you know, without any problem, without probably SEC getting involved. And, you know, it's, it's much easier. You don't have to set up LLC and people can invest, you know, in the U.S., like if they're in China, Japan, Europe. It's going to be much smoother and quicker transaction. So that's definitely coming. So, you know, talking about your, because uh, you mentioned one thing that I think very important uh, for people to understand, how do you vet potential partner, which, you know, from passive investment standpoint, how do you vet your potential company that you're looking to invest with? I mean, what people should be aware of before they go and make that decision? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think... There are a few very important fundamentals uh, and, and it all boils down to uh, trustworthiness and credibility and, and, and ethics. You know, you, you essentially want to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with good people. And, I mean, that's kind of my way of simplifying it. You know, like I don't want to be around people who are not good people. I, I certainly don't want to be doing business with them. So that's what you're trying to find out. Like, is this person honest? Uh, will, will this person have a good work ethic? And uh, is it someone who I can really rely on? And then um, surrounding yourself with those types of people and then finding people who sort of fill in gaps that you have where it's a team, right? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the team aspect first. Uh, try to find people who are strong where you're weak. Now, being a tech guy who invests, being someone who invests actively in large apartment buildings, you might think I'm a big numbers guy, and, and I'm actually not. I'm, I'm a people guy. I really love relationships. You know, I love meeting new people, and I, I love the, all of this mindset talk that we've been having today, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but 
one of the people on my team is absolutely a numbers guy. He's super smart, former professional accountant, loves looking at spreadsheets and can put some of the most impressive formulas I've seen together in spreadsheets and analyze these deals five different ways, run ridiculously complex stress test models on them and all of that. He loves it. So I partner with him, right? Um, the, another guy, he really loves uh, project management and making sure things are in order, very detailed tasks don't slip through the cracks and things aren't missed. Uh, so I partner with that guy. And, you know, they want someone who's going to go out here and get on podcasts and talk to people and meet people, right? And interface with our investors and enjoy communicating with the people who invest with us. So they partner with me, right? So we all kind of complement each other and fill each other's gaps. Now, of course, we, we first had to satisfy the requirement that we were honest, good, ethical people, right? So we got to know each other. We built relationships and we learned about each other. And then we were able to kind of put that team together. So I think that's what you need to do, right? Establish that they're good people and then look for people who will kind of fill in your gaps. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It never looks the way you think it will look when you're going into this. And that's okay. You know, what you come out with will probably be what's right. Uh, now for investing with a group, with a team, it's really important that you uh, do some homework on them, you know, um, look at previous investments, uh, talk to someone they've invested with, uh, you know, get references, follow up on those references, um, kind of look at their social media activity. You can find out a little bit about people that way, potentially, and um do your homework. If you need to run background checks, that's okay. You know, like at Dreamstone, we're open to that kind of stuff, right? We want people to feel comfortable investing with us. And if you're looking at a new operator to invest with, you should be doing that too. You should make sure you're really comfortable with them and you feel like you can trust them. And they've got a track record that demonstrates that, that you can. Exactly. Exactly. So that's a great advice. Thanks for sharing the, that with, with us, Adam. So it's very true. What you mentioned is for people, they need to get comfortable, first of all, with the company and then with information itself, because there's a little bit of a learning curve and, you know, understanding how actually multifamily syndication works, which, of course, you can get in kind of contact with Adam himself or somebody from the team uh, from the website, which, of course, is going to be in the show notes and ask these questions about how do those multifamily syndication deals work, how you can invest, what's the minimum and how, what's the exit strategy and what's the return, all of that, you know, great stuff. So getting comfortable. So talking about getting comfortable, again, you have the, as I mentioned, tech guys who invest podcasts. So can you talk about what type of educational, you know, uh, information do you provide for, for the people? Yeah, absolutely. We talk a lot about some of the things we talked about here today. We talk about mindset and how to think about getting yourself ready. And we talk a lot about taking action and, and how to move beyond fear to take action and take your financial future into your own hands and, and really own that. So we talk about that stuff a lot. We do talk about all different kinds of investments. I mean, we're real estate focused because I'm focused on multifamily. My co-host Kevin is focused on notes. So that, that's pretty interesting because he educates people on how note investing works. And then we have people from, we've had people from uh, guys who run REITs and, and funds like that on the show, all the way to people who, you know, just do Airbnb rentals and stuff. So like the, the full gamut of guests. Uh, and occasionally we'll bring someone on outside of real estate, not too often, but it is interesting every now and then to have someone on who invests in other things. And just, uh, we try to provide a really broad educational spectrum and that way people are just getting information, you know, and, and educating themselves and it allows that we're, we're actually kind of trying to be that, that gateway. We're trying to help people find where they fit and what they want and, and help them on that path, get them started so they can then take that path and focus in and, and get all the details they want. 
Awesome. Awesome. So make sure to go and check it out, Tech Guys Who Invest podcast that I'm sure is available all over the place uh, on iTunes as well. So go and yep. subscribe and check it out, the existing content, which I'm sure there's more great shows. So will be coming out and are coming out in the near future. So what about Tampa Catflow Educational Meetup? I mean, due to the COVID kind of distancing restrictions, I'm sure that you don't have that currently going, but do you do like virtual meetups at the moment? Yeah, we do at the moment. We started out playing Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, and we would just meet up and educate people by playing the game, which was awesome. But then unfortunately, when COVID hit, we had to go online. We, we tried to do that game online and it didn't work out. Um, so what we did is we shifted to now what we do are webinar style uh, meetups. So if you, if you go to meetups.com, and search for Tampa Cash Flow Education, you'll find us. And we just do like a, a monthly educational meetup, like, you know, how to invest with cash flow or, uh, you know, how to invest in your first real estate deal, things like that. Got it. Okay. So make sure to go and check it out Tampa Cash Flow Educational uh, Meetup, as Adam said. And of course, there's much more, you know, content available on Tech Guys Who Invest podcast. And, you know, if you ask, Adam, personally, you know, the questions that you're looking to get the answers to. And I mean, you know, I love the fact because you're coming from kind of tech background and you you understand the, the importance of being, you know, diversified or leveraged with, you know, with real estate investments and you're helping other people to educate and again, shift their personal mindset and why and how people should, should go and invest in multifamily, which is awesome. So besides all of that that you're currently doing, what is your personal legacy that you're looking to leave behind you as well? Ooh, I love that question. It, for me, it's all about my, my family. You know, I, I have a, a wife who I love and two beautiful daughters, and I really want to leave it for them. You know, I mean, I, I want to change the shape of my family tree. As I said, I, I came up from very modest, uh, middle-class background, and I want my girls to have more than I had. And, and it's not just about physical things or, or uh, wealth in, in terms of money. It's about experience. Like I want, I want them to live the best life they possibly can. And I'm just trying to set them up for that. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, that's where it should start for everybody who's listening or watching, you know, like just making an impact on the closest people that you can. Again, part of that is, you know, wife and the kids and, and, the, fa and the people around you, because that will create those, you know, ripple effects going from there, you know? So, so yeah. that is awesome. I love Thank that. Thank you. There's one more thing I will mention. And um, it, you know, I, I really want to help thousands of kids. That That's kind of my big why that I hope to attain. Um, after achieving full financial independence. Um, when I can spend my time really focusing on kind of how to change the world and um, not have to focus on just taking care of business and feeding the family and, and all of that, uh, in some way I would like to help thousands of kids who aren't able to help themselves and, and I'd like it to be somehow through education, right? There are lots of kids who, uh, for many reasons, just aren't able to get good education that they need. And I'm not just talking about going to school. You know, I'm talking about learning some of the things we talked about that they don't teach in school and how to really make a better life for themselves and to give them some hope that, look, you know, like you can get out of the situation you grew up in and you can kind of change your family tree. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly what that looks like yet. It's it's pretty much at the level I just laid out there right now. But uh, at some point in my future, uh, that's where I'm headed. That's going to be my more long term goal. Yeah, and that is very awesome. So again, I, I don't think that any that any things that we spoke about today on the podcast, I don't think that any of those things they teach in school you know right yeah exactly which is there's a you know educational system is lacking a lot of different pieces that are you know needed that are crucial to make a life successful you know or our business successful so again for you guys and girls who are watching or listening to this episode i want to ask you if you can pass this episode along to a friend of yours you know 
two people could be one who is looking to start something in personal life again so i think this episode will be great inspiration for them and because there's a lot of great minds of shifts that will help them to kind of understand and get a little bit more clarity in these crazy times what they can do you know with real estate in the future and the people of course if you have somebody who is looking to to make an investment and potentially that's a you know multifamily deal so for those people of course can get in contact with adam personally as i mentioned linkedin facebook twitter and the website is going to be in the show notes uh, so make sure to do that adam for you personally i just want to say a big thank you again for coming over and sharing your personal journey inspiring us and giving some more clarity and uh, wisdom you know to go and pursue this uh, real estate investment thanks so much for having me on beating alpha Thank you. I appreciate it. So guys, uh, make sure to, to pass this episode along. And as always, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.